Welcome back to every trusty to channel. Today's class we'll be learning how to make this beautiful dan shaky top. It's a very simple blouse and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so this fabric comes like like this. Okay. This an entire fabric tip. It comes with a pattern on it like this. So you are going to carefully study the fabric to know how to perfectly cut it to fit into what you want. So you can see that it comes with this design per space. Okay, so this is one space. So from here to here is going to be another one. So that is how the fabric comes. So now I'm going to study it now and then cut out the portion. That will be enough for the blouse that i want to make so you can see so whatever it is that you're cutting out has to be identical okay one side has to be exactly the same with the other side for example you cannot cut this side at this point now and then you cut the next side on this green mark so you have to study it if you are cutting at this point then you cut at the same point on the other side you are cutting on this green mark you cut on the green mark at the other side so the first thing we need to do now is to remove that portion that we need from this whole fabric before we start to work with it okay so i've cut out what i need from this fabric and you can see that it's exactly the same on so it stops on this red point here and it stops on the red point here also so the next thing i'm going to do next is to fold this into four because i'm going to be cutting my front and back together so i'm going to first fold it into two like this then after folding into two I'm going to fold it into four. So when you are folding it, you fold neatly. Make sure everything is equal and they rhyme with each other. So after folding it into two like this, I'm going to fold this into four. Then we'll start taking our measurement. Also on the neckline area, make sure that your folding is equal. So you can see where this green neckline is now. So I will make sure that I match them with each other because they have to be exactly the same for you to get something really nice. So you have to be mindful of all those tiny, tiny details. So you make sure that you have exactly the same thing on both sides basically that is what we are trying to achieve okay so it's folded now this is not going to be having any shoulder seam so i'm not going to join it on the shoulder the only journey i'm going to have is going to be on my side and this is also a kimono blouse so it means you're cutting the sleeve together with the main fabric so the first thing i'm going to measure is my shoulder the shoulder is 16 divided by 2 is 8 inches so i have 8 inches here then after marking 8 inches i'll measure how long i want this blouse to be on my sleeve so i want it to stop around my elbow and the elbow measurement that i'm working with is 10 inches so this is 10 inches and then i'm just going to leave whatever it is that i have left there for aiming okay so if you don't want to take your measurement like this you just need to take your measurement from your center back directly to where you want it to stop so if i take that measurement now i have around 18 inches so once you just start from your starting point here you just measure your 18 inches like that so whichever one is fine for you so the blouse length we are working with is the length that we have from this Ankara so the next thing now is to decide our neckline so you can see that we have the varying uh, neck depth neck width here for the designs that we have so now if you're working with maybe a child you can just use the first one it should be enough but for me i want a neckline of around three inches because i don't want it too wide as well so i'm just going to be maintaining what i have here on this blue line so if you want it wider you can see that we still have other designs that will give you a wider neckline so after marking that neckline i'm going to mark my neck depth so for the back i want the neck depth to be around one and a half inches okay so i'm just going to connect that 
to cut out my neck depth first before to cut out my back neckline first before i cut out the front so after noting that neck depth the next thing now is to decide our sleeve opening that's how big you want your m of your sleeves to be so for me it's not going to be a tightly fitted outfit so i'm going to take that measurement really loosely okay so if i'm taking the measurement like this so i have around 18 inches you can see how free it is so it's inches divided by two is going to give me nine inches so nine inches is here which is also my ham hole depth so here to shape the blouse a bit i'm going to mark the nine inches here as well and another nine inches i'm going to take my bust measurement the bust is 44 divided by four is 11 then i'm going to add ease of half an inch that's 11 and half and then same allowance of one inch okay and then on the hem i'm just going to take the hip measurement so the hip measurement is 46 inches 46 divided by you can see i'm not shaping the waist but if you want to shape the waist of yours you can do that so hip divided by four is 11 and half i'm adding half an inch is also that's 12 inches plus one inch seam allowance so i'm going to connect this i'm supposed to actually mark this on the wrong side of the fabric but the design is more obvious on the right side so i don't want the chalk marking to be too much so now to cut out the sleeve i'm going to connect the nine inches that i have here up to where my bust measurement stops so you can see this base here that we have here that's where the sleeve stops but because i don't want it too sharp i'm just going to connect it in a curved way so that i can have a smooth transition like this okay so once i have this now i'm done taking my measurement the next thing is for me to cut out this blouse so here cutting from here now and then i'm bending my hand up to here okay so you can even increase your ample measurement of i just like what i have here so now the next thing is to work on the neckline so like i said i'm going to cut out the back neckline first then after cutting out the back neckline i'm going to separate the back from the front so you can see how lovely it is so because this is not going to be having a zipper the back the front neckline has to be wider than what we have at the back so that the head can pass through it easily so i'm going to rearrange this again carefully to have the same thing on both sides of my front and then i'm going to work on the front neckline so now the back neckline was 11 and a half so the 11 and a half inches stops here so i'm just going to increase this to three inches or even four inches so after that i'm going to cut out a v shape so i will just maintain what i have here so you can see of around four inches this will let the head open up better for me to wear it easily so now i'll first connect these three inches back to my neck point and then i'll cut it out before i open the center front so now it's connected and i'm going to cut this out so after cutting it out i'm just going to make a line here okay so i'll open the top and this is what it looks like now okay so this is what i have you can see that the head can easily pass through it now so the next thing is for me to cut a facing for this because i don't have twice that you use a bias because of this v shape that you have there so that you don't lose that shape so to hard facing to this i'm going to refold my fabric then bring in a fresh fabric underneath it and trace out exactly what i have here on my neckline okay so i've laid another fabric on it i folded it into two and then placed my neckline on it so i'm cutting out exactly the same shape that i have there and then at the center front as well i'm going to open it up to that point where i opened on the main fabric okay so now i'm going to bring out my main fabric and then 
I'll cut out this facing that I have. To turn the neckline, I'm just going to lay my main fabric down like this and then I'll take the facing and lay it directly on the main fabric. And then I'll pin it down and take it to the sewing machine and then sew it. So you can leave your facing as wide well as you want. You can leave it like this or you can cut it shorter. I think I'm going to leave the front like this and cut the back a bit shorter. So when you're sewing it, you can sew with your Amy glue so that by the time you iron it, you glue the facing down because you don't want it sticking out. So I'm going to print this round now and then sew it. So for the front pocket, I've put my fabric on fold and I cut out a fabric of around 9 inches by four and a half inches so when i open it this is what it looks like so this is the length of the pocket and this is the width so i'm going to fold it in like this and so i'll do the same thing on this side i'll do the same thing on the hem also and then on the upper part i'm going to fold in half an inch and then fold in like one inch so i'll sew it around before i place this on this front Okay, so I'm just going to aim it all around and then fold it in front like this and then place it and so, so it's very simple. Basically, we've done everything we need to do. So I'll go ahead and do all this now and bring it back to show us. Okay, so I've gone ahead to sew it around, then you notch it and then you take it inside. So now, by the time you turn it out, you see that your neckline is neatly finished. You just need to go ahead and iron it. So, I'm going to fix my pocket now, then I'm going to sew the side seam. So, when you are sewing it as well, make sure that your seams are very identical. Just keep checking the two sides to see that you have exactly the same thing. It's very important so that the beauty of the blouse can really come out well. So, you just have to have exactly the same thing. So, you can see the front that it is exactly the same as what I have on the other side and this is what the back looks like so now I've also hemmed the sleeve area the hem of my sleeve I've hemmed it inwards so this is these are my two pockets and I've gone ahead to sew it around and then on the upper part I folded it in by one inch so one goes here and the other goes to the other side so I just want to look for a perfect placement for them and again I want them to also be identical so and the pocket is actually not important you don't want to put the pocket you may not you may just decide to not put it especially if you want the design that you have here to show so I'm even thinking of not putting this pocket again but basically if you want to put the pocket that's how you do it and then you just switch it around. so I'm not sure I'm going to use this pocket any longer the next thing I'm going to do now is to fold the front and back on each other and then I'm going to go ahead and sew the side seam with the allowance that I left so when I get here I'm going to leave like four inches or five inches and then stop my sewing here and I'm going to aim it inwards like this so that I can have like an opening here and then I'm going to hem it on the hem line also and the blouse is ready Okay, so this is what our dashiki looks like on the mannequin you can see that it is really really beautiful and we have exactly the same thing on both sides just like i emphasized when we were drafting this so i later decided to put my pocket here because i really wanted this design to show so i reduced the pocket but i'm not sure i may still take it as let me know in the comment section if you think i should leave this pocket here but i love what this is looking like it's like a crop top and it's really really beautiful as we have seen i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye